let's start with the second part of this tutorial where we are going to finish by creating a wildfire risk map. The first thing we are going to do is importing our land use and land cover. So let's search on our folder and import it to the map. Now I will open the attribute table and I'm going to add two fields. As you can see, uh, this shapefile is the same that we used on the first part of this tutorial. And now we need to create two more fields. So to do this, I will just drag and drop our project to the side and open an Excel folder that we are going to use to get some information. I'll go to this folder and open this Excel file. The vulnerability will be measured on a scale of 0 to 1, so 0 uh, less vulnerability and 1 the maximum vulnerability. And for the economic value will be measured on euros uh, per hectare. These values can be a bit subjective, so I looked in the literature for the most used values in this type of analysis. Let's go back to ArcGIS Pro and let's click on Add Field and create the Vulnerability field. And I will change this to double and now Economic Value and double as well. Let's click on Save. And now we are just going to do the same process that we did on the first video. So we will just select by attributes and assemble uh, these values to each uh, land use and land cover type. To do this, go to select by attributes and start by selecting the land use and land cover that you want. For example, let's go to this one and let's say that is equal to forests of maritime pine, for example, add clause, or is equal to other regenous forests, and click OK. As you can see, these values are selected, and now on the vulnerability field, go to fill calculator and fill with the vulnerability class. So in this, in this case, the number one. Now on my Excel folder, I will just change the color of these values. So I, I know that these values are already set up and you just do this for every land use and land cover type. So for the vulnerability and for the economic value. Since we did this on the first part, I fast forward this part. So I'm here just finishing the last land use and land cover type for the economic value. Let's click OK and field with 84. And that's it. This part is done. I can now close the Excel file. Don't forget to check on the description below uh, all the data and all the files that I used to, to create uh, this tutorial uh, for the part one and for this part. And now we can create our potential damage. So to do this, just open the land use and land cover type. Let's save it first. Click on add field. And let's create our potential damage field. The data type will be double as well. Click save. And to calculate the potential damage, you just multiply the vulnerability field with the economic value field. So click right here, go to calculate field, and now you just do vulnerability, then click right here on the multiply operator, and then you select economic value. Let's adjust this a little bit. Click on OK, and there we have our potential damage. As you can see, we have a lot of zeros, but if 
if we sort this descending, we can see the higher values. Let's close the land use and land cover. Let's maximize our, our project. Go to analysis, more tools. And here you can search for feature to raster. Click right here, drag and drop the land use and land cover to the input features. The field will be the potential damage. Let's select our output and the name. I will call it p underscore dam underscore vng. Click save. The output cell size will be 10. And right here, you do the same thing as we did on the first part. OK, and now we click on Run. OK, if we uncheck our land use and land cover shapefile, we can see our potential damage. So the red values, the lower values, and with greens, the higher values. Now to create our risk map, we need to multiply uh, this map with our hazard map. So I will just drag the hazard map to the top. And now we need to multiply this map with our potential damage map. To do this, we just search for the raster calculator once again. And then we just multiply these two maps. Uh, be aware that uh, when we do this type of calculation, the hazard map needs to be the non-reclassified version. I will change the name of the hazard map because this name is a little confusing, so I just call it hazard, hazard like this. Okay, and now let's do the calculation. So let's multiply the hazard map with the potential damage map, like this. Let's create the output. I will call it risk underscore VNG. And on environments, let's do the same process. OK, click run. And there we have our risk map. Let's remove these three maps. We are not going to use them. Let's invert the values so we can see the more risk with darker values. And now what we need to do is, of course, reclassify this map. So let's go to analysis, more tools and search for reclassify drag and drop the risk map to the input raster, go to classify and change this to quantile. Click OK. And there we have our uh, five classes. So one, two, three, four, five. So number one, the, the, the lower risk and five, the, the higher risk. Let's create an output. This time I will call it risk VNG, but with an R, so I can, I can, I know that this is a reclassification. And here you do the same process as well. And we can click on run. And so as we did on our hazard map, we need to define uh, areas with no values, for example, artificialized territories or water bodies. But this time we are going to do this a little different, okay? Let's open the attribute table of our land use and land cover. Go to select by attributes, right here. And let's see where number one is equal to artificialized territories Add clause, or 
and now here uncovered spaces and to finish water bodies click OK and now we just click on this button to switch our selection then go to analysis more tools and search for extract by mask so by using this tool what we are going to say to ArcGIS is that we want the areas of our risk map but only on the on the selection okay don't forget to 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 check the use the selected records let's name it right here it's inside choose VNG and once again change the environments as we did before and we can click on run and there we have our risk map let's remove these maps that we are not going to use and let's change the symbology on the scale from green to to red so the number one will be very low two is low three will be medium four will be high and the class number five will be very high let's now change the colors like this I like to choose these these ones and now the number one like this and that's how we create a wildfire risk map obviously there are several ways to do this type of analysis using another type of input data for example but in this tutorial I'll use the official methodology for this study area so if you have any questions or special requests don't hesitate to write a comment thank you for watching if you like this type of content, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment what you want to learn next.